Oh, there's Julianne. Great. Julianne. The keeper, the mistress of the whatever. So today is the 14th. So we, um, I'd like to have a, I guess, call the meeting to order. And can we have a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting? I motion to approve them. Thank you. Good job, Cole. Yeah, that was great and fast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if I have a second. I'll second. Thank you. Um, oh, we need someone to take minutes tonight. I can do that as well. I do not have an arm that can do that. OK, okay. thank you, Cole. Um, so we need to do a roll call. Um, so I vote yes. Sandra? Yes. Cole? Yes. Arthur? Yes. Robin? Yes. Matt? Yes. Leanne? Yes. Andy Leanne, Andy can't. So we're all set. Um, let's see. I guess we can turn directly to proposals. Um, and I hope someone remembers where we were because I we are. I, I put it in the email. So application number four hundred. Wait, four four eight three one from. Got Pete. it. Oh, One, Amory's three, Ballet. World. Emily's World. That's quite wonderful. Um, okay, let me just open my book. So, um, Amory's Ballet, I mean, if I think I sent out last year's um, uh, grants to everybody. So if you looked at that, you'll see Amherst Ballet is one of those that we've uh, traditionally funded. And um, I asked Sydney about it when she said she couldn't come tonight. And she said she, she dances with Amherst Ballet and thinks the world of it and absolutely loves it. So in case anyone's wondering, we have a first person. Um, <laughs> My grandchildren take ballet there too, as did my daughter years and years ago. Yeah. And my daughters dance there and I'm on the board. So right. ah. that's okay. my, uh, not really a conflict, I guess. But no, it's yeah. not really a conflict. If, if we all had to ignore proposals because we're members of organizations or on the board, no, we wouldn't be able to discuss anything. <laughs> um, So does anyone have any thoughts about about this project? Well, yes, just I don't know how much because and what we have, but definitely. Yeah, you like it. I mean, you've... Always. I mean, I think it's great. But sometimes there's just no question, right? Yeah. Um, I think they can probably get some nice press with it being about Emily Dickinson and you know the town. It's I mean it couldn't be more pointed towards Amherst culture itself and historic culture. So yeah, yeah. I think we will. I've been trying to. I, I should do it on paper and not in my mind. When I was walking this afternoon, I tried to think. So if we funded all of the the real Amherst core activities at around $2,000 more or less, um, that would take $20,000. And I'm trying to parcel out the other, but just doing it in my mind, which was not bad, but I'm hoping there's some that we can give um, full funding to, and this would be one of the ones I would like to see, but we can't do that yet until we go through everything. Um, so any other comments about it? So we're all pretty positive. And has anyone seen their performances other than the grandparents and board members? <laughs> My sister danced there for a really long time and they have a great, they'd have a really good ballet program, but they also have like this great like contemporary program. Mm. And it's, That's yeah, nice. they do like really interesting things. Yeah. Okay, good, okay. Um, so we'll see what we can do. Oh dear, we're at Craig's. Well, that Craig's one. Stores. We, that one's off off the thing, right? That's off the thing. There you oh. go. 
I have a quick it, question about that. Sure. Yeah, me too. I don't understand why it's off, considering that she's not the one who actually applied for it, right? Somebody else is applying for a grant. She will be paid through the grant if we approve it, but it's not her project. Um, it is her project. Project, yeah. Even though she's not on the application? Well, she's on the application as a recipient. Um, she just, um, and we don't even know who Kevin Noonan is as the contact person. Um, it just seems, I mean, we, we can certainly consider it and we can certainly fund it, but our guidelines say only one project per person. So I, I definitely get that. It just seems like she's an artist that's being paid by this other project to do something totally different, right? I, I, or like she didn't apply for it. And it's not really her idea either. Oh, it, it is her like, idea. It is her idea. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, it's she's fine with it. I spoke to her about it. And, and even if we don't do it, it's something that, you know, the cultural district might pick up. Um, the bid was very impressed with the project she did last year. Um, but it, you know, all of the money in this one and the almost the following one go to her and the and the uh, commercial um, company that she works with. GD, you spoke to her and she chose the senior center because yeah, that's a permanent permanent installation. And by the way, there are a lot of questions with Craig's doors. Um, she'd have to get have people sign off on this, um, yep. the, the people being photographed. I, I personally think it's creepy as a project. If it were first responders in Amherst, I'd say I'd be, you know, yeah, but I think folk, I don't know. please speak mm -hmm. up people. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, I had problems with it, but also it's such an underserved group of people that I was happy to see something for them, but I don't know the details of whether people wanted this, or whether she was just gonna go in there and try to photograph them. Well, she can't even go inside the facility. I think the permissions piece is, is difficult yeah. because even if you, for some of these folks, even if they give permission, do they really truly understand yeah. what all of it's going, you know, the whole project's going to be? Um, I mean, frankly, you might have the same problem, you know, if, if you're working, you know, in a, in a nursing home with people who don't understand things and, you know, but if I think just beyond the permissions thing and if, you know, she came back to you so quickly, like, oh yeah, they're both mine. Okay, I picked, so yeah. why, you know, why, why continue to go down that path if there are concerns? Um, we could take a vote just to see how you all feel about considering it or not considering it on thinking that she's an artist that would get funded on two projects, whereas most people don't. I mean, do you want to take a formal vote on this? Gigi, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, under applicant name, it says Craig's Doors. Right. And then it gives 434 North Pleasant Street. Is that okay. her address? What, whose no. address is um, Craig's Doors has moved to the Unitarian Church. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought Craig's Door had wanted this, but it's sounding like that's not so, that this is well, her project and she wants to go in there and I, I'm not sure what. She also wants us to fully fund it, which we can't really do, so. Maybe it's easier to do a, a vote rather than a lengthy discussion. Okay. So the vote will be, um, if you vote aye, you're voting to consider both proposals, okay? And if you vote no, that means that we'll only consider the um, one for the senior center, which is a permanent installation, by the way. 
with full support um, from the senior center. Um, so all in favor of considering both proposals, uh, say aye or raise your hand, I guess. One, two. I'm not sure. So. <laughs> okay, so against. One, two, one, two, three, okay. And one abstention. Well, I can be convinced probably the other way, but. Huh? I could probably be convinced the other way. I'm just not. Yeah. I, I, it's just such an underserved community. Yep. So I'm not sure this is the way to. I'm work. not sure that this serves the community. Exactly. I, 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 think, it, I think it almost. Exploit. I don't know what it does. I, I'd rather see I, I, folks be able to create art of their own and, yeah. and, and have an art show or something. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I think I think it has the potential to serve the community by uh, putting, you know, putting a, a face on it. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, there, there's an absence of that now by by at least putting it in, in the public light. In in some sense, I think that's worth considering. Okay, Matt. I voted no, but not for any um, aesthetic or or rationale based on the project. I just think procedurally, you know, who, whichever names get put into the application, it sounds like we're pretty clear that these are both her projects. And right. I think that's a guideline that we should we should stick with. That's that's what caught me. And there's another person who also has applied twice. So this, last year this kind we of thing could come back to bite us, you know, because <laughs> people people would see it and they'd be able to come back later years and say, well, what about that? You know, that she had those one, two yeah. projects. So right. we do have to be careful. Okay. You're right. Good point, Matt. Okay. So that's, yeah. You know, so is that off? Yeah. So that's off. We'll pull that. Okay. Oh, that, so that means no funding at all for this one. No funding at all. Okay. And, She's fine with these. But we'll do better for her senior center proposal. I hope. Okay. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, 19. The theater co-op, is that right? Amherst uh, walks. Yeah. Okay, Amherst walks. 170. Oh yeah, 170. I'm going. Never mind. Okay, yes, Amherst walks, and that'll be held at the Hitchcock Center. And is this the, is this the Hitchcock Center's only? I mean, they they come up a lot, and I had I haven't studied it closely enough. Is is this their only application as a formal organization? I was I, wondering the same thing. I believe so. The other proposal that we talked about was the um, Deer Path School, which is right. holding a program there. As a venue, yeah. At the venue. So I, okay, I just yeah. wanted to double check. I, I think there's at least a couple more that, that included them somehow, but so yeah. so as long as this, this is their only uh, proposal, I thought it was strong across all, all areas. I didn't see anything to object to it. Yeah, this is, this is where I get really, um, angry at the MCC for not somehow giving instructions that tell the applicants if they're an organization, use that name. I mean, otherwise you look at this and you think Amelia Thompson is proposing to do this, but it's the Hitchcock Center, so. Well, it says applicant type nonprofit organization, <clears throat> not individual, so. Right, anyway. I did think the numbers served as that's really low, but it is in Amherst. Right. Um, yeah. So that that to me, you know, as far as funding versus full funding, partial versus full funding, mm -hmm. because the numbers are so low, I'd be less inclined to fully fund it, even though it's not a huge amount, but it's just, it's not. Right, enough. 40 people is hardly any, but they are going to use this, I guess, as the basis for a guidebook or something. Yeah, I wonder what that was. Yeah. I, I, I was I think 40 is a is a low estimate based on yeah. the you know the longer impact. I mean, I will say I, I really enjoyed many, many of these, 
but very few prompted me to go put something on my calendar and get me on a mailing list. I mean, I think I think something that is a guided walk of the of the sites in our town, you know, that has a lot of value and and um, the guidebook type thing being beyond. Yeah, it's also focused on accessibility. So there will be people who wouldn't really be able to do other types of nature walk or at least comfortable, comfortably. Um, mm -hmm. And it's science, which we don't have a lot of. So right. um, yeah, I think this, yeah. I'm inclined to, because it's not very much money to fund it as much as we can. I think, sure. yeah, I think we, we probably can fund it fully, although with the understanding that it's a small number of people, but it's... Um, but the field guide will be available to more people. Right, exactly. To publish it, yeah. So Probably like next year they'll ask us for money to publish it. <laughs> That's next year. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I hope they do. I yeah, well, they should. I, I noticed there was no money for, for that, so that is right. a, but that, you know, that's a legitimate um, point. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, um, it will have a larger impact. And once they get, I mean, I've walked out on their properties and it's not, you know, they don't have great signs yet or arrows or anything. And this will really force them into doing that. And that'll be good. I went with a group of women my age and <laughs> we ended up going around in circles and it was like zero degrees out. There'd been a cold oh. morning. This was last winter. But we got out all right. No one froze. Okay, Arcadia players, thirty-first season. They're asking for two thousand um, dollars. They perform in Amherst in part. They kind of move around a little bit, but um, their concerts are fabulous, and they've done the past. Christmas season, they uh, released a film of last year's Messiah, which they fortunately had made. Um, and the, marketing, the marketing expenses look high to me. Yeah, they yeah. do a lot of... Um, are they not included at all in the live from Sanctuary application we looked at earlier? Um, I guess they're getting um, live from Sanctuary is doing a fundraiser for them, I believe. On, on page um, 180, they talk about um, the producer of the Sanctuary series producing this as well. Like. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Right. And um, I think they're in a tricky place. They don't know if they're, what their season will really look like, but they're doing their best. Um, marketing, where do I see marketing? Marketing, uh, they often, they, they do, um, usually they, don't they publish a program book with advertising in it? And I mean that. Yeah, under there, how are you planning to promote the project? They have like a lot of different things. They want to like send press releases to a bunch of different towns and stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean, like there's a lot there, but a lot of it's like email, social media, YouTube, uh, things that don't cost anything. So I'm just saying like, I, I guess like what it boils down to is I'm in favor of funding it, but not fully. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's kind of my- We usually haven't funded them fully in the past. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, I, they certainly deserve support. And uh, so we will figure out numbers they asked for a thousand. Um, last year, I think we gave them a thousand. They were probably happy with. So continue that. Um, so the next one is Isabella Delolio's other project, becoming 
filming photography here. Um, and she's asking for 1500. The big question I had here was considering, you know, that uh, that there isn't some sort of a virtual version of this. Like how easy would it be to put a slideshow together for people who don't feel that they can get out and, and who've been part of the community who'd like to see those faces? Would like I mean, we don't require that they're being virtual. You mean the, the senior center murals? Yeah, yeah, because I think there's still be, there will still be people who can't get out, you know, and go right. see it. Um, well, they'll be up for a very long time. Oh. And I mean, I suspect that when they go up, there'll be very good press and people will see it that way, I think. So it's one of the photos that she did because I'm not terribly happy with the photo representing the senior center. Well, I mean, so it may not matter what I think, but I just think they're a little bit strange in some ways. Yeah, that one of Nina Scott is scary. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. Yeah, and then there's like just one guy below, and then there's yeah, they just weird and i like the first one but it's kids um well, it's kids so interacting with a senior citizen the senior is, but it's a little you know i think the content is for the senior center and yeah. isabella to work point. i don't think that's right um yes yeah i'm i'm pretty pretty strongly in favor of funding this one yeah. um yeah I mean, even if I'm like not particularly, I'm not saying I am or I'm, I'm not like not a, uh, you know a fan of the the style of art. I guess like I don't feel like it's up to me to like judge the artistic merit of somebody that I'm funding if it's like, you know, if it is an art project, which I think it is. I think it'll be. I think it'll be kind of neat, and that's a pretty. Um, I guess they they uh, kind of rehabbed the senior center. Um, which mm -hmm. kind of needs it. This big public space is pretty drab and dreary as I remember it. So um, this will spruce it up considerably. Do you know when this would go up? Because I feel like if they do this and there's a huge thing, it's like, I just don't know when COVID cases are gonna be like realistically going down. Oh, I don't think they can do anything on installation until post COVID restrictions are removed. Um, the public buildings are pretty much closed, except, I mean, the senior center is open. That's where they're giving the uh, vaccines, vaccine uh, for the pandemic, for the virus. I think yeah. that's the only reason the senior center is open right now. Well, you can pick up food, but you grab it apparently, and otherwise- right, Grab and go. Yeah. I mean, it's like the library will be closed, certainly. Probably through the spring, Cindy. Possibly mm -hmm. longer. So, and the town hall is still closed. So I don't think they can get in to do any work on the installation. I could be wrong on that. I don't know. She says spring 2021. I mean, that could be. I, it'll happen. A dumb question is the senior center and the bang center the same thing mm -hmm. okay because didn't okay. we have a conversation last year about that center and saying that yes it was mostly used by seniors but that it it was the bang center which wasn't exclusively seniors just i'm just trying to reconcile this in my head it's the bang center the i thought the bang center was the whole building and the senior center was is within it. Okay, Maybe. thank you. That helps. But I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, there's a health clinic there that was put together. Yeah, that's right. Honor um, the senior center is in the bank center, and then the bank center is the whole building. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So this is for one of the big public. So we're saying yes, but. Yes, we'll try, to do, we'll try to do the whole thing. We'll see how it works out. Be nice if we could. 
Um, so Abigail Weaver, um, theater between addresses, the plague wedding. wedding. Um, and it will be done via live stream at the Pine Box Studios in Florence. Do you know anything about this facility, Sandra? You know anything about this Pine Box? Anybody? I don't. Oh, uh, pa, pa, <coughs> pa, excuse me, Pine Box? Yeah. It, it's a space in East Hampton. Um, that can be rented out. Huh. We did a couple of rehearsals there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not like an organization or anything. It's um. It's it's, it's a studio. studio. Yeah. yeah. So it says it's in Florence. Right. Well, it's a studio space for them to to do the recording. Yeah, Florence is a village of Northampton. Yeah. I, I I actually went and watched um, some of the clips on this, and I didn't find them to be very um, well organized or coherent. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Um, I also I'm think sorry, I'm sorry, know, Matt. What what wasn't very organized? I watched some of the clips that they had included in there. Um, uh, there's a page of um, listen to our first audio drama and watch the premiere of The Canary. So I watched oh, okay. some of that stuff on YouTube yeah. and, and I just, I, it didn't, um, didn't really hold together for me. I think, you know, which I mean, past performance doesn't always predict future um, success, but I, I, I wasn't super into that. Um, and then, although this is happening uh, virtually, I think it's, it's sort of a, it's a live, Northampton event that's, you know, that's being um, turned into something virtual. Um, so I, I, if, if the council wanted to partially fund it, I, I could support it, but I could also think, I think we could also uh, pass on it as well. Yeah, I had some concerns about, you know, the relevance to Amherst. The, the one tie to Amherst is there's a costumer who, happens to be an Amherst resident. But aside from that, it, it didn't have strong ties. And you know, you can make the case that anything that's offered virtually anywhere on the planet could be seen by an Amherst resident, you know, so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like we, we haven't applied that same logic to other, um, other virtual performances, like some of the, was it the live from Sanctuary was in Northampton typically? I guess um, we have more of a feel from them from past years that we we know that they have a following of people in Amherst who would go there physically in person, you know, and that that doesn't mean just because we don't know for another group, you know, I, I get your point, but yeah, I th I thought thematically at least this seemed like a cool project. It's ambitious, and I don't know if people are getting even the title. Um, you know, she's trying to tie in all sorts of other themes wow. here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Worse of ghetto, she's trying to tie in all sorts of stuff, which is interesting. I'm just not sure she can pull it off. This seems very ambitious. Well, the producer has a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to help them try to pull it yeah. off. I mean, I know? think we can give them some money. I don't think we should yeah. cut them off by any means. Um, you know. Maybe not 2000, but certainly. Uh, Will we be able to access this? Well, um, it's unclear to me whether it's going to be. They would like to be able to charge for it. But if it weren't virtual, you'd have to pay for it. I think that it's theater. It seems like it'll be live streamed regardless of whether or not they also have it in person, unless I'm getting that wrong. Right. Free access to film live stream. Yeah, I, I think that the final form is um, 
not even necessarily live stream, right? I think, isn't it? Um, oh, no, it's live stream. But I, I guess the intended form is really is really virtual with a possibility for in person. Right. So when it's live stream, will we in Amherst be able to I don't know how they could impose okay. something that would say people in Amherst couldn't watch it. No, I don't mean that. I, sometimes, you know, we can't pick up how, well, I, I guess maybe I'm thinking of something else. I mean, sometimes there have been radio shows and, and we can't get them in, mm -hmm. in Amherst and there's been town access that things have been produced on that we yeah. can't pick up in Amherst. And that's what I'm wondering because it says Northampton Open Media. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it's a live stream, I, I think that would imply digital. Um, and I don't, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think there'd be like a spatial limitation on that. Almost all radio stations tend to have, um, you know, uh, a website uh, where you can. Uh, yeah, hopefully now. So okay. So I, would, I mean, I would say it sounds like we, you know, am I freezing again? No. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I, I, I feel like, you know, we certainly can, can partially fund it, but I, I would say before we come back around with final numbers, if others would check out some of these links too, I, I don't want to be the only one okay. sort of griping and I didn't watch everything all together, but the few things that I did dip into it gave me a little bit of concern as to the ability to, you know, as as I think Sandra said, pull off a pretty ambitious project. Okay, well, let's we should, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, on my sheet, I put down, you know, 500 towards their proposal. I did as well. Yeah, we can think of, you know, that's, that's nice. Um, Charlemont Forum. Um, they do some really nice programs. This is a yeah. couple of interesting ones. Um, they prefer to um, hold them in person. Last summer, they uh, had webinars and I went to one of them and I was just really blown away by how terrific it was and the high quality of the speaker. It was Al Gore's daughter um, giving a wonderful presentation that completely pulled together the economy, the pandemic and racial inequities. Um, and she was brilliant. They really seem to work to get some heavy hitters and some, some really unique perspectives. Yeah. I mean, clearly there's always the, the dunk against them that they're not in Amherst, but, you know, with, with the ability to access virtually, they're more accessible than ever. Yeah. Well, I, mean, and I think the spirit, of, I almost, the spirit of coming in for $200 for, from all the Valley Cultural Councils, I think really captures, you know, a, a, a nice sort of regional approach. So I, I mean, I, I can't see any reason to hesitate on, on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Like full or partial? Full. 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 Good. The full 200. Yeah. Full, full 200. 200. Big spender. Yeah. <laughs> full. <laughs> um, oh, the next uh, proposal I, 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 I have problems with because it's for the January of 2022. Mm. Is that in, don't we have 18 months? Um, uh, but that begins six months ago. Gotcha. So it's not actually in this funding round. It's the, no, it would, this would be the next funding round. Uh -huh. And I sent uh, Mina a note and never got an answer asking her if the, in the 18 months is there, but where when does it begin and when does it end and she never got back to me so uh, DG yeah um somebody I, I mean what's her name Rothenberg always puts in a grant yeah and so someone and she always puts down capital expenses somebody right. should tell her 
Well, these are just for tickets for kids. No, no, but she always lists a number for uh, capital expenses, which we do not allow. Well, we don't fund. Oh. Well, it's in there, though, as a list. So. I mean, by now, she should, by now she should it. go. <laughs> I had, I, she actually lives not far from me and she was one of the first people I met um, when I was walking around one day and uh, she, it was lovely. She invited me. Yes, in. she is. I, I, I like her. I, I I've dealt with her a lot, but it's just, yeah. I don't think she understands what capital expenses means. <laughs> no, she doesn't. This, this whole electronic format, one time I had to, when she first did one, I really had to walk her through it. I mean, she doesn't really need to even give the whole budget. It, yeah. What they want is a thousand dollars for a hundred tickets for kids. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's it's printed. I mean, that's part of the application grant. She didn't say and capital expenses expenditures. It's actually in there. Yeah. So she just filled it in, I guess. Um, I mean, we could we can tell her that she may not use the thousand we give her towards capital expenditure if you felt necessary. But I'm I'm more worried about Gigi's the the time. Um, I mean, is is there any I mean, is there any work around on that issue or or well, is that really what, what she is? What the what, this is really the friends of the Amherst Leisure Services Community Theater. It's not even a grant of the theater i mean it's anyway yeah yeah well it's a, i mean it's a lovely I, I i think it's lovely but you know if it's if it's outside of the grant timeline then yeah what's what i what i would encourage her to do is uh just resubmit this next fall and it'll go through perfectly so okay that i mean that would be assuming that like there there we wouldn't have like the same delays as this year Right. You know, for so that that's my only concern that if uh, if there was a delay in, in the grant cycle again, then you know, and and it happened now, and the thing's supposed to be in January, then she wouldn't be able to secure funding at all, right? Well, yes, she could because we can fund projects that take place before we consider. Um... But they wouldn't know that they had that money. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it possible the date's just a mistake? I mean, I think at this point we could discuss and discuss, but we really need her to get back to us. Right. I, yeah, I'd like to just give her the opportunity to respond and, and yeah. correct. So and give it to respond. us either in a date format that actually works for us to be able to fund it. Right. Or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see what I can. <sighs> I mean, say say she gets the grant to buy tickets in December for the show that will be in January. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, what I did last year was let her know um, as soon as we met and as soon, well, I, I let her know as soon as the uh, the council uh, did the final vote. I called her up and said, Barbara, you'll get your letter in a week, but I want you to know this is what we've done. And that was fine. That was fine. Yeah, la last year they did Matilda at Bowker. It was, it was a great show. Yeah. And, and then the process then went, so. Okay. Page 218. Um, and the next one is? Juneteenth. Oh, Shoshona King. Without having any background on this, I mean, given the town's priorities around racial justice, I, I think we have, unless anybody has a clear reason that we can't fund this. I, 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 I don't see any way we, we can't fund it. <laughs> I totally agree with you, Matt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we need to fund it. I did have a couple of questions and I think some of this just comes from folks in experience, you know, and then this format's kind of tough. So for instance, isn't the entertainment um, expense noted the same as a stipend? perhaps, or is that different? Oh. I think it, I think it, that intends to be a stipend of sorts for artists to come in. I think so, okay. And it, it might just help, you know, to get there, it cleaned up so it's listed as a, as a stipend. And I, I'd like to see more, more marketing. 
because I think they said they're going to send some letters and emails, you know, and the numbers are pretty low at 60. I think this should, it should no. be much bigger, you know, a lot more than 60. I can't, yeah. I think but I don't know what a built-in audience is. That's the people who know them and know their work and yeah and i think it's much more than 60. i mean i also like what yeah i mean that would be my thing i think the community really needs this and i think i'd like to fully fund it but you know i'd, I'd like to see it, it bigger and and not just taken for granted that the community that they already know would be involved but that it'd be a larger thing that can be a, a little bit more transformative for us yeah, yeah I, I feel like uh, I was going to say, I feel like they're really trying to reach, like, really just, like, people of color, I think, is the, like, main demographic that they're really trying to reach for this event. So I don't know if, like, like, I feel like the kind of marketing they're wanting to do is, like, super specific. And I don't know, like, if, I don't know, if it's, like, they want it to be, like, an event that's, like, a huge, like, town thing or more of, like, an event that really like centers those people. I don't know if that is makes this, sense. Um, I keep looking to our young members. Is this, would this be an event that, you know, either of you would be willing? I know. Want to. Do you know anything about this? Um, I actually don't, but like, since I've never heard about it, I'm most likely going to go ask my mom if I can go and probably tell my friends about it, so. And they'll probably want to go to. Yeah, yeah. I, more than six sixty. I would think this is this might be an event that could well be publicized in the schools, for example. June nineteenth, though you're out of school by then. Mm -hmm. um, no, just borderline. No. Yeah. And so it could be okay, kind of yes. marketed a bit, and that's something that you know the three of you could do maybe in the spring is. Um, you know, make a note and try to get in contact with um, Demetria. I'm not seeing the, the specific location for it. Yeah, yeah I think I had that question too. And, and how? We're doing a lot of work to do. Could we like evolve? Um, have an that I'm confused too. I wondered also what this is and, and where or how we go to it or participate in it. And I was kind of visualizing, and this is, you know, not, I, I was kind of visualizing it on one of the commons, either the South mm -hmm. or the North common. Um, yeah. with a, you know, you, small sound stage and um, musical entertainment, maybe. Well, I think it's, maybe they need 600. As far as money, I mean, I think their budget probably isn't big enough. Oh, people, Act people, oh, people, maybe yeah. 60. You know, sometimes oh, we, we go back to applicants and, and you know, like the one before, you haven't given us a date format for us to approve this. I mean, I think we can all agree that, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking too strongly, that we'd like to just fully fund this, right? But I, I, I sense an opportunity here where this applicant could really use some help because it, it absolutely lacks structure, lacks location. And in this case, if we went back and pushed back and asked them to clean up this application, it, it might actually move it towards being more successful. It might help it to be real enough to them, you know, to to line up the the location, um, just to give them a little incentive, and you know, also a sounding board that they haven't had previously. That makes sense to me. I just want to put in that they've had this Juneteenth celebration for years now. This is not a new thing. Wow. It's I mean, it's the first time it's been an official holiday, but I mean. Yeah. It's been years, like this last year was virtual, obviously, but I mean, before that it's been, I mean, it's a, it's a big event. No, I mean, like I know all over the country, but has it been happening here in Amherst? That's what I mean. It's been, it's been an event here in Amherst for years. 
Really? Where? Who? <laughs> and, and where? Where does uh, At the library. It, like, so two years ago, it started at the town hall. They had a procession uh, to the library, the big event at the library. There was food, there was a movie, there was a display of things from special collections. Um, so, I mean, it's a big deal. Huh. Thank you for that. Uh, I mean, but I think that's what, what they're talking about with this built-in audience is they have people who- They have, okay. I mean, and but there, I think there were more than 60 people who came to that. Have to be. Uh, that's why I think maybe it's a typo when they meant 600. Uh, uh, could be. Well, there weren't 600 people there either, so. <laughs> but I mean, also, if you look at the folks involved, they're oh, well-known people, so. Yeah. Maybe they downplayed to 60 because of COVID. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Because it's, I just don't know if, like, like the beginning of June, like, if 600 people could realistically, even if it's outside. No. And June. Let's hope. Well, I will call Shoshone <laughs> yeah. and see if I can get an answer about where it's going to be held and ask her again about the numbers. What else would you like to know? We also would want the application fixed so the entertainment is stipend, just to be. Well, that's, that's, that's not, I mean, she says there's entertainment. I can check, so make sure that entertainment and stipends are the same. Well, that's what it is. Entertainment equals stipends, yeah. Yeah. I guess, I mean, it would be nice to see more marketing happen. Maybe there is more marketing going on with it than what they're listing. Okay. There's a pretty strong connection. I mean, the, uh, yep, sure, the Africana studies at UMass. Oh yeah, no, these are I mean, that's a great contact in terms of getting audience for sure. Okay. The next one's easy. Mm -hmm. Seminars. Um, last year, we, I guess in previous years, we'd given them a couple of hundred dollars. Um, on the off chance that maybe two people from Amherst would wander over to Worthington. Um, and then last year we finally pulled the plug and didn't fund them. And um, I mean, it's, it's troublesome to me, although it takes place here, the you know, principal uh, people in it live in New York. Uh, don't believe that, um, they really live in New York and not Worthington. I mean, that's a summer residence. The artists are all New York. Yeah, you stand I mean, there. They're very fine uh, musicians, but um, it really has very little to do with this community. The closest it got to being local that I could see was the South Hadley, um, was it nursing home? Elaine Manor in South Hadley. Well, I think it was a difference. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Are you confusing them with Laura? Hmm? They pretty much send in the same application every year. This is this year is it oh. going to be virtual the whole thing or oh right new to me because and then we're back to the same thing as with everybody else that the virtual can. element is hard we hope will help to enrich the class of all, our virtual component um, right I, I think i think they may be in the same boat as many of us i mean so the letter on letterhead on 239 talks about resuming their live performances but i picked up you know the concession that there's a very good chance it'll be virtual as well but gg to your initial point um 
I had no objection to the group, but I didn't see the Amherst, the value to the Amherst community. I just, yeah. I mean, I think we mm -hmm. need to support our own. And there's, there's also, also a comment in there that implies that we've never heard classical music before. And I don't know if she's that just. <laughs> So, um, no. unless I hear to the contrary, I think we should drop them. And the, the towns are just like in alphabetical order. It's scary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was like a... Yeah, and I can't imagine that, um, well, I don't know. Um, that's a very wealthy area of the Berkshires. I, yeah. I think that's fine. And then the yeah. other the other thing is that um, they have a facility that gets that has to pay local property tax. That I can't understand that they can't get the town to recognize that they're a tax exempt um, organization. But that's hmm. Uh, impairments. They're they're incorporated. Is that the problem? Can you be incorporated? Um, not a one K. But it's probably they're incorporated in New York State. I yeah. don't know, Julianne. I don't know the ins and outs, but it's. Um, I'm not arguing for them. So I'm just saying. I don't, I, I don't know why the town. I'm really excited to hear the discussion of the next one. Yeah, let's do <laughs> the next one. So we're saying no. The no funding. I, I, just, I, I, mean, I know how, how I responded to it, but I'm, I'm very intrigued just to hear how others tell us about the poetic dialogue. I was so excited about this one because classic maintaining our art should should, you know, our public art should be a first priority. And it, it looks like an individual saw the need, went out, applied for the grant, found the talent. Wow. Hey, we're, we're on the Amherst Public Art Commission for to restore mm -hmm. the poetic dialogue. Okay. I think um, it's a no brainer, but you know. I well, I, I just have a question is the town doesn't pay to keep up its parks? No, it does. My husband's on the Public Arts Commission. So fair disclosure, I know far too much. Okay. <laughs> they do not have a budget line from the town. How? Do they raise funds? Wow. Well, they're, um, well, they're coming to us for this project. They've got some, they do have some free labor from the town embedded in this project. Yeah, it seemed very um, low, actually. It, um, no, they don't, they don't raise money. I mean, it's something that my husband and I talk about, you know, why don't we the idea that I had, or maybe it came up out of this group, but um, you know, basically a check off on our tax bills. I'd like to contribute two dollars this quarter for this semi-annual period on my property tax. That would raise. So can I can I be provocative for a second? Because I mean, my reaction, of course, is that this has to happen. I mean, you know, this this is certainly a project that must happen. Right. But I, um, you know, I was pretty conflicted by the notion that, you know, one Amherst public body would have to come to another in this way to mm -hmm. get a fairly small amount of funding for, let's say is a national historical, you know, a, a fairly a fairly high profile thing. And I, you know, I'm not saying I want to do it, but I just, I feel like a, a rejection of this it, that says that it's the town's obligation to fund its it's public works would be a, a bit of a statement. Um, and I'm not saying that we should do it, but but it is a little shocking to me that, you know, that the APAC has to come begging to us for, for funds or something like this. Mm -hmm. I guess it's all put in perspective when you realize that Fort River School is sinking into like a swamp-like existence, you know, and we didn't even take care of that. So if, okay. you know, and yes, the town absolutely should take care of this. I'm shocked that they haven't. And yet knowing the history of so much in this town, the reality is, is there would be other things that are far more important to fund immediately. 
And if we can do this and it's a reasonable budget, we should, but you know, it, it needs to change at a larger scale, I agree. Well, or even, I mean, our money is all coming from the state, you know, not, this is not Amherst money in any way. This is state money that's being funneled through. And so, I mean, you could take a couple of days and find a couple of donors and you could run a donor's choose and pay for this thing. I, you know, I, I support paying for it. I, we should fund it, but I'm just being a little bit cantankerous right now because I think it's kind of ridiculous. I totally yeah. agree, but. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember the day like me and my mom were driving past it and she was like, did you hear like in the Gazette, like someone just like, yeah. like something, I, I forget exactly what happened, but it was just like really sad because it was such a great thing, like in the middle of town, which is like really bad that people would do that to it. Yeah, somebody broke into my car right outside of there too, actually. Oh my God. See, if we yeah. clean this up, then people wouldn't break into your car there. It's that very <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. We got your back. Yeah. So, Gigi, you said a lot of it is uh, donated because it seemed like. No, not a lot. <laughs> Only the the landscaping the town okay. will do and working okay, on that. Makes, path it's twelve. I think it was twelve hundred dollars to do that. Seems very low. Well, um, the, they got a quote from this person who's doing it. I mean, that. Yeah, I know. Maybe he's really lowering his. Yeah. Well, that it takes some time and a lot of work, and he needs a lot of supplies. And it's still, no, I think it's a low amount. I think mm -hmm. I can't believe it's not a lot more. Fourteen hundred. Um, well, you know, we're not really to question the accuracy of the budgets. This is unless we wasting the money, but I, I agree. I think we need to fund it. Right. Okay. We have to, but we're not really to question. Yeah, what a mess that is. Oh, okay. Let's go on to the next one. Um, musical. What, what was the what was the final? What was we'll the final? Fund it, uh, we'll fund it fully. Fully. Okay. Cool. okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, what a mess that is. Oh, okay. Let's go on to the uh, musical. Anyone else hear that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it any of us? Yeah. It sounds like it's a re playing us it's back. It's the recording that's going on. Oh. You're recording us, right. Okay. Oh dear. Um, so musical, the musical. <laughs> um, I, I know one of the, um, one of the like student leaders, I have a like mutual friend with her and she does dance and they seem like, just like, like she's always been like really nice and like seems to really have, even though it's led by kids, I feel like they do have a drive and the art they create is like really interesting. I mean, to, to yeah. seek funding through a, you know, a council, I'd like that's more than I would ever be ambitious enough to do as a teenager. So yeah. I believe they have a lot of ambition. I think it's fabulous. Separate yeah. from TBTA. It's not part of their curriculum. They just happen to be associated with it, or is it something they're doing? I think it's something the they're doing on top of their normal curriculum, as far as I know. Um, the Frank Newton, who's head of the um, Jenny uh, Lynn, spoke to me about this this evening when we chatted on the phone earlier, rather, and. Uh, Frank Newton's letter from the Performing Arts School is, you know, really strong, and he believes that these kids can do it. And uh, I, I don't think it's part of the school program. I think even if the musical itself is part of curriculum, mm -hmm. recording it is something totally different. Mm. Um, I think e even if they came to us saying we, we wrote this already, we want to just record it, I think it would still be worth it. Yeah. 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 What are they asking for again? 950. 950 or something. It's quite modest. Yeah. I'd be in favor of getting, at least getting close to that. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. And I think, I mean, I'm just really impressed that students would go to this, make this effort to support their work. 
a lot of wholesome proposals. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did, did anyone question them about outdoor performances in late winter? <laughs> That's how you get pneumonia, isn't it? <laughs> Not really. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. So we're saying yes and. Um, say yes. Cool if we can do it. If not two thirds, you know, we'll get as close as we can. Okay. Did anyone look at their music samples? I tried, I couldn't get anything to load. Oh, okay. Me as well. Yeah, that I, I love everything about it, but I, so if, if Leah knows some of these folks, like that, that, that actually makes me feel better. Cause I was, there's there my only reservation was, is this something that the, you know, the teacher is sort of put together, packaged, written up and submitted, yeah. but especially because I couldn't check out the music, um, mm -hmm. but I should, I'll go back and maybe, maybe I just need to work harder at that. I think the links are broken. I don't think they work. Not you. As well. Yeah. Okay. So they did it themselves. I mean, I'm sure they had some guidance, but that alone Wait. I think is worth supporting. My my husband is on the board at PVPA, and we've, in the last four or five years, have gone to you know like most of the student performances, and they just are mind blowing. And when they get back on stage, if you see a performance, they do a big musical every year. It's as well staged as New York really? shows, wow. and the the. Young people who are singing have absolutely almost always brilliant voices. Um, once in a while, you know, there'll be particularly sadly a male lead whose voice isn't up to the female lead's voice, but um, you know, really there's extraordinary. And the the musicians in the little band that Frank Newton, can, I mean, that's just it's fantastic. Okay, I'm good. I'm 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 sold. They're good. No, yeah. they're not. You won me over. Okay. Um, okay, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Isn't that just on the other side of the Connecticut River? <laughs> <laughs> this, um, I would love to go to it. It looks amazing, but it doesn't, what does it have to do with us? It has yeah. nothing to do with Amherst, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah like, it seems like a cool project, but like I can't, like I couldn't find a way to spin it to like find the public benefit for Amherst. Me too, especially now. How how far away would this take place? Pittsfield, so Pittsfield. hour and 20, 25 minutes maybe. Mm -hmm. It's more. like Boston. Wow. Yeah, you have to go down to the Turnpike and head west. It's close to. No, no, it's more than an hour and twenty minutes. Um, you can. I've made the trip from Amherst to Pittsfield many times so, many many yeah all my family is from there actually you, then yeah um, sorry i know i mean it's it's yeah. not a cash you know i don't know it's a trip. I, it's, there are many many other local councils much closer and those are the ones they should be i mean why they picked us yeah. you know we're the they northampton and amherst um I, I've often wondered that too. But, you know, not not Greenfield, not, um, anyway. Not yeah, Greenfield around them. Greenfield's even farther, them. I think. Yeah. And it's just, uh, yeah, because it's. Adam, Adam, anyway, I'd like, I think denying it is sensible on the grounds that it is pretty far removed from where we are. <laughs> No benefit to us. I mean, we'd love to go to it if it happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that all right with everybody? Yep. Okay. Speak now or forever hold your feet. Okay. So, uh, in actually, the letter that gets sent to them, I know that's pretty much a form thing, but it is it possible to add something? You know, it would. Rejected because it wasn't an Amherst, much as we would welcome. Oh no, that it's a very formal thing, and that's exactly what gets cited. It, but we I mean, last year there was someone. We would welcome someone 
from Cambridge who wanted money to perform like in Northampton. And I wrote him and said, we love your project. Why, you know, please resubmit next year and bring it here perform in our backyard, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, Can I ask a question? Just, I mean, we're close to not, well, getting close to halfway through or, or about halfway through when we do, you know, we do a first pass through and get a sense of things. Mm -hmm. Are we then going to try to have quick additional discussion on the um, final allocations when we Very do the, the second Very run quick. through? Or how do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What we've done in the past, but didn't do this time because it didn't seem practical, was actually kind of a sign in our minds and down on paper a half, a third, two thirds, whatever. Um, I'll take a look at Julianne's um, spreadsheet and the comments and, you know, try, uh, I might sit down sometime over the weekend and see if I can come up with some ideas that'll give us a sense of how we're doing. Um, but you know, we have to go through them all once and then we'll, then we'll have to pretty quickly say, okay, we've got you know, 40, I think we'll have around 45,000 to spend total. Here are 10 projects that we want to fund fully, do that. We'll take that money off the table and then divvy up um, the others. And, you know, basically it's half for a lot of them. Yeah. Right. And that's, and then two thirds for a few. Well, there's a lot okay. where a lot of large ones we said no. Yeah. Yeah, so we're doing, we're doing we're doing fine. Um, I, should, I should add on the on the average page where lots of folks have put scores in, but not as many people have have put some sort of a suggested potential grant amount. So mm -hmm. if anybody's looking at the Excel sheet that I sent out, um, don't put too much weight in store on what's been put there for a proposed suggested grant as an average. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to, uh, I just, I was just curious about the process. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, empathy through empathy theater. Through theater. Page uh, two. Okay. Right, got it. In the, um, So target audience, seven to 12 years old. Do people think that's reasonable? What do people kind think of. about this? I was kind of- I feel like the questions. if, if yeah. you're having like conversations about like climate change or race, like the conversations seven-year-olds are gonna be having are gonna be like very, very different than conversations 12-year-olds will be having. Mm. Like I, cause that's like my siblings are basically about that age. And it's like, I don't know. It just feels like, I don't know. You like sort of like, not like sugarcoat, but like with seven year olds, they're going to need to be sort of like, you're going to need to be like gentler with them when you talk about like scarier things. Right. Yeah. Like the way that I read it, I, I could have read it wrong, but I didn't think they were going to necessarily like talk about those subjects. I thought they were going to, I thought they were using that like kind of like examples, I guess. But then I, I felt like the point was just to talk about like empathy to children more broadly, which I'm, that's a good thing, I think. By the time you're I, seven, it's kind of too late. You either have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of concerns about it from feasibility and, and others, but you know, it's a relatively small amount. Um, and and I'm not usually somebody that's swayed by um, testimonials, but I thought the testimonial emails that they included from parents at the end, that, mm -hmm. that made me say for this amount of money and for this general good intentions, I, I would have no trouble, you know, I would support funding this. Yes. Yeah, totally. Like, the, the letters from the parents pointed me in a, in a different direction, which is, it seems like they're kind of a, a day camp type business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're based in Hadley. And I wanted to know 
how this particular thing is different from their other fee-based camp programs that they're already running and why they didn't apply to any other LLCs like Hadley. And for the 100 children served, is that what 100 kids who all get to be in this camp that one specific week at no cost? Um, so I just had a lot of questions. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, but I thought it was free for the participants, I, I, for, for the kids. Uh, volunteer contributions and people pay as they can. Um, and, uh, you know, a thousand person mailing list on their, on their email groups. I mean, I agree it wasn't, it's not the most, you know, I don't know, uh, logistically tight. But how's it but different I, I from what they're good. offering otherwise? But I just couldn't figure out. Well, I, think these, I think these others either paid tuition or they went, they either went through the school, like come back to the Fort River community or um, people paid to participate. And I think they want to give this away to these hundred kids. I I know uh, about Cat Catalina Arubla. She did a lot of um, uh, ex exhibitions at the Jones Library in our you know our big space. And um, I I would like to fully fund it. Really. She's um, I mean, one reason she's applied to Amherst, I think, is that she is tied into the Amherst community. She's definitely, definitely a member of the um, governing committee for the cultural district, for example. Um, she she's like a really busy, creative person. Oh, that's who this is. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, 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 I Did you miss that? Yeah. I completely missed that. That was. So let's. Um, gives a lot of perspective. Multi arts is based at, I think that's, is that Fort River? But that's like a huge Amherst program that I actually went to and was really great. Oh. It was like, I, I don't know how I missed this, but it was like multi arts was this like camp and they, it was like kind of like family owned. And they had like, just like, they had a lot of really interesting things. Like the art style was really interesting. They did like flamenco dancing, which I never like experienced anywhere else. Uh -huh. And it was just, it was really fun. And I know a lot of kids really liked it. And they definitely have like a following of people who go there. Well, that helps. Cause I didn't, I, I didn't even know it was in Amherst. Yeah. And I feel like I was thinking about the like seven to 12 and with the, with the multi-arts, they probably did that, but like divided the kids up like through different classrooms. So I don't know. I feel like now that it was, it is like a really, is it, cause it says the only time multi-arts is mentioned is like the applicant name. So I don't know if it's like through that thing. Yeah, because well, the other the other piece that I think is kind of neat about this is, you know, whereas everybody else is kind of like, yeah, we're going to do something totally different using Zoom or whatever. And we're making a job like I feel like this person is really owning, embracing the medium. And this very last letter talks about how, you know, multi arts has been running things on Zoom since April and and that they really understand the cognitive side. I mean, it actually seems like and believe me, you know, seeing kids in online learning, uh, it, it's, it's no small feat to make progress with them, you know, and, and so I feel like somebody who's got a little bit of a track record on that, like the parents all seem to love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a, it's a slam dunk, especially if folks have know her, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. She was a great educator. Okie dokie. Oh, oh yeah, this one. This yes. one. Yeah, creative entrepreneurs, outspoken CEO. I, what is that? <laughs> Does anyone know Lauren Mills? No. I I don't even know what it was. I read. I I really. It mentions a permanent installation, but doesn't tell us where that would be. <laughs> right. It could yeah, be on the moon. I, I don't know. <laughs> I love that. 
Um, I have the same question. It's like, but where? Has it even been arranged? Oh, right. This is the one that, yeah, the, the people doing the collage visual arts book. Well, I'm not sure it's a collage. Um, they have to be students. And it was going to be someplace, a permanent installation. But There's wait. no letter from these schools if but, we're interacting with these yeah. from our local schools. Like, I don't think kids are going to even be in schools for a long time. Mm. It's January 9th to April. It says Monica Cage, firm commitment. But I'm not sure what that even. Yeah, it doesn't say who Monica Cage is, I know. Well, so other individual that will be involved in the project. The others are potential. I mean, it's. I have the same thing, like, but what is this? Yeah, there's a seven hundred dollar budget for marketing, and they're going to do some emails and letters. Um, it's but, I don't understand it without some some sort of endorsement from the schools when the schools are named. That bothers me, right? Especially with such a big stipend. If if we're, I mean, if we're moving towards a, a rejection of this one, I would encourage them to reapply with more demonstration of their partnership and what they're intending to do. Because I I mean, I think a lot of the very generic descriptions are the kinds of things that we would like to fund if there was anything, you know, and, and they may, and it may be that they're getting denied for something that they in fact are gonna do, you know, like they may have had these, they just didn't know to get letters of, of recommendation and things, um, so. But I, but I can't see any way we'd fund it as, as written. Yeah, I think it's way too vague. And yeah, uh, they also talk about a field trip, but they don't say where or how to get there. Yeah. Huh. And if it was in the school, then the field trip component wouldn't really make sense. <laughs> well, unless it was, you know, the kids from Crocker Farm go to Fort River for the field trip to see the mural and then, and then come back. But that would be a disappointing field trip. Yeah, that feels like a lot for. <laughs> I, I mean, to like bring them to a different school and then back. <laughs> yeah, some very disappointed kids if he did that. I think just based on the lack of a location and, and dates alone, you know, they'd have to clean that up. We really couldn't about that yeah but is that something GG, that you would want to reach out to them for more details on their application or just tell them to wait till next year, come back next year next year yeah um if we were to go back to every proposal that was lacking something that would have made it better we would never get done I <laughs> agree. wants to take it on go right ahead it's just <laughs> way 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 beyond i mean it's one thing what we've done in the past if someone has not submitted a letter from a venue we would i would as chair write that letter just a quick email exchange but asking a, an applicant basically to redo the entire proposal um there's just that that's just isn't that's not feasible. Of course. It feels uh, like a very vague proposal for such a big amount of money that they want us to give them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. For $2,000, it's a lot. So we're saying no. We're Maybe. saying no, sadly. Right. Okay. And then we come down to cheeseburgers and rock and roll. <laughs> It was fun here as we've got two in, a, two in a row that have everything to do with our schools that our schools aren't asking for or supporting. <laughs> Motivational speaker, yeah. whatever. But and, I mean, it, it didn't even go to say well, that this school wants me to come. Like, right. you know. Exactly. Did, did anyone look at the, um, like his website or anything like that? Oh yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. And it might be great for something else, but. I'm not sure this is great for little kids, big chain stores. But besides that, exactly what Julian said, he said, I'm going to do this during regular school time. It's like, really? 
teachers have agreed to this. Yeah. So the parents have agreed to this. And he's only talking about, I think, one time that 2,000 computers, I guess, could be, you know, looking at it. Um, so it, it just didn't seem also very child uh, centered or. Oh, it's, it's totally, I think it's totally ch like geared to the kid. Like, I mean, if like I watched the I'm videos and it was like, there's like hundreds of kids cheering for this man. Yeah. At a farm or at a fair, but there, no, there was like a, a school gymnasium in the one that I saw on his website. See, I mean, I think the thing I'm coming, I'm a one, I'm a girl, and two, I'm in my 60s, so <laughs> I have a whole different view of this. But if you guys think this is like great, then that's a different, you know. But, but is it art? Again, there's no connection to the Amherst schools. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, I think it for for the right student could be a wonderful experience and. But you know, and if if you come with a letter from a te from the principal or somebody, then that's a different conversation. But if you're just telling me you're going to market your thing to our schools, then you know, good luck to you. Like, yeah. call us when you. He's yeah. um, and remember, he's also from Medway. It's not yeah. like it's a local person. Right. Yeah. Right. He's and also how he picked up Amherst. I guess he saw Arlington and we were near it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen a chainsaw um, sculptor at the Big E. Yeah. Oh, oh they're great. great. It's the same amazing. Thing. <laughs> he's great. The ice, yeah. For ice sculptures. Huh. Uh, well, ice sculpture is a whole other thing. Ice sculpture is amazing, but this is trees. Did so you... no funding for him, right? Today. Look at this. We ran out of scored applications. It's seven fifty-five. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh -huh. So how many do we so, have? Uh, let me. Um, we got, uh, got about twenty left, I think, because we already got rid of one of them. Right. The next group. We've got uh, chain source is thirty-two. We've got 53 minus, I guess, the one. We have about 20. We have about 20. Um, so let me also report that we can set up a crowd. I um, go fund me if you want. Um, Sign up. You can do what? We can set up a GoFundMe. Since we oh, oh fund OK. It. Because other committees have, and just the checks need to be written to the town of Amherst, I think. And then for fundraising and other things, it's basically the same thing in many ways if we wanted to do it. So we can do those just so we know. So who who actually sets that up? And uh, We'd have to set it up ourselves. I mean. So we have the carte blanche to create using, I mean, none of us have a town email account other than Cindy. Right. Um, we, I can find out what has details. its own. Yeah, email we do. Address. We actually have one. Um, yeah. I think which we probably the next chair will want to implement but <laughs> i i using your too many email accounts already <laughs> i didn't even want to get into the nitty gritty but i mean that we do have one and it would be the one if we did a go fund me account that would be where the correspondence okay. would end up i take it right that's what i ask yeah 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 So, so I think, I mean, we, I think we agreed that we were going to do that, correct? I mean, that was, yeah. you know, I know Robin needed to investigate, but it was. Right. So we could take a vote. I have a quick question. Um, sure. It depends. I think whether or not we should use GoFundMe depends on what type of fundraising we're doing. Um, for the most part, GoFundMe is usually used for projects, you set specific goals, and you ask people to fund you up to that goal. Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that makes the most sense for us as a body. Um, right, because I don't think we have a specific project in mind that we want to fundraise for. We want to fundraise at events to then use for projects later on. Which is, a I guess my thought, Cole, was that, was that we would, you know, we would set an annual goal that corresponded with this particular juncture where we're dispersing the funds. So, you know, the annual goal would be to match the state money 
with local money on a on a yearly basis to fund, you know, to fund the projects. But I I do hear your point. I mean, there is a more fluid kind of way to do it using I don't know what Venmo or something, you know, something else. I, I mean, I, I, as long as we structure it that way, I think that's great. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't planning on using GoFundMe. I don't think you can just accept donations through GoFundMe for random random use. You have to set up a project and say. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the the project would be to create a fund for the use I'm, of local. I really, I really appreciate your perspective yeah. on this because, I mean, we it, rather than just you know, pick the first thing if there's some other means of collecting money that's more general and lets us be more flexible in a way that people don't have expectations of it being a project with an end, you know, fundraising goal, we should we should look into that. You know, I, I was questioning the GoFundMe just because we didn't have enough um, around, you know, how we were going to use it. And I see no harm in setting one up, but I think you know, if we're going to collect the money, there's a lot of responsibility we have to have to have plans to turn it back around to people and we don't formally have that yet. Um, but I have no problems with setting these accounts up. If we took a vote there, sure, I'd vote to set up a GoFundMe, but maybe that's not the only thing we need to Cole's point. Maybe there's some other means of, of collecting fundraising money that's more general that we also need. And then to, to actually use them, we need a lot more structure to make sure that it it meets the public good we're trying to achieve. Well, I think that's, I mean, for me, and I'm, I'm totally on board with, you know, needing multiple or possibly needing multiple ways to uh, collect funds, et cetera. Um, but for me, the, the, this really comes about because when I asked the, you know, folks who have been doing this for a while, are you short? Are, you know, on a yearly basis, are we short? Are we unable to fund everything we'd like to fund? And the, re the answer was kind of resoundingly yes. So to me, I mean, I, I don't, I completely agree that side projects, um, Pecha Kucha, other other projects like that certainly may need a different structured funding approach. But for me, this is about matching the the state money with with local funds and and finding ways to fund the merit worthy projects that come our you know people take the time to conceive and, and pro apply for these things and we we can't give them full funding and sometimes i think that's a value judgment that we should make but i'm getting the impression that more often than not we just don't have enough money to distribute according to to merit and, right. and i think something like this is a way to to do that and when we do have our final, you know, going through assigning dollars, if we, you know, come up a couple of thousand dollars short, we we can use the funds that have accumulated. Yeah. Um, yeah. For that, so if we, you know, get come to an impasse uh, at the end, we do have a little extra money, and it would be great to use that money, and it would be great. To replenish it, yeah. Um, and it would seem that when we do the Pecha Kucha, there'll be, um, you know, a lot of good positive um, feedback on that, and that would be a great time to be able to, within the publicity for it, you know, if you want to contribute to a GoFundMe project to make more events like this possible, that would be perfectly good. Um, so, and so, Northampton has, um, they do two cycles of grants a year. I think that's nice because the, being locked into just an annual cycle, it'd be nice to, to have more flowing throughout the exactly. year. Yep. Should we, should we, in the interest of time, kind of table this and anybody who wants to go and look at, to Cole's point, additional ways of bringing in money um, that would make more sense for how the tools are used to, to possibly add that as well mm -hmm. and continue that the conversation I, mean, I think we're all in support but it's just yep. nice to have everything you know organized and it's something that we don't have to um have in place um by you know february 1st and this is 
the kind of thing that we could actually devote half of a meeting to and just do some brainstorming around, yeah, what we would do with additional funding and how we would structure, you know, if, if we got an additional 10 or $15,000 in contributions, how could we spend that each year? How would we craft our own um, application process and uh, work that out? And would we limit it more strictly to what goes on in Amherst or... Um, I don't my, know. Only, my only urgency that I, I wanna put out there is that when we announce these awards, that unto itself is a splash. And I think it's important that we have some way to collect money online at that time. Hmm. And I've never used GoFundMe. I don't, I don't actually don't really love it because people are always tagging me on Facebook on GoFundMe things that I have no idea what they are. So, you know, I have no loyalty to that brand whatsoever, but I do think whether it's PayPal, uh, you know, I, I really don't have a strong stance, but I, I think it is important that we have a way to solicit funds online when we announce the grants. Right. Okay. Um, if we do a kind of a virtual showcase at the end of the summer as these projects have rolled out would be probably um, a good time to have it. I don't know. Yeah. As, as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We've never we really ever, yeah. um, you know, the newspaper just doesn't really give us much press. I, when we do annual reports and stuff. Um, so I'm not sure how, how to make a big bang with our grant decisions. Um, we could maybe try to use the Instagram following we have to try to, or like the Facebook, because I know a lot of things could happen over there, but it's definitely, yeah. I'm gonna have to go, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Cause I, I think this is a conversation that warrants like more said, than... a half meeting or, or more. Right. Which exactly. Just, just yet, but um yeah, I think we um, all let me before you go. Um, are we all sure that we want? I mean, given the event of the at the last meeting when Sydney was the recipient of something pretty atrocious, are we still good with having our faces out there and our names? didn't think we had a choice about having our, our names, those of us who are on the council. Well, that, yeah, that's all, that's all publicly available yes. for sure. Um, it is I mean, a mixed thing. Hmm? It is mixed to have our faces out there, I think, you're right. Yeah, the, the camera is no friend of mine. So if I, if I had the opportunity to yeah. Not have my face anywhere ever. I'd, I'd take oh, it. Oh, come on. Don't oh, come on. You're beautiful. Stop that. I mean, yes, but you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, uh, I feel better not doing it, but that's, if we have to, that's, I'll do it. Yeah. I think it's hard for us to relate to each other as a, as a group and have effective communication without it. So my question mm. then would be, is there a way, if we're recording, can we split the audio from the video or are we mm. concerned about just observation because people would be able to see our faces if they came to the meeting in person, but it, it ends up strangely being a little bit more publicly available. And this is, I mean, I'm assuming on Instagram, we're much more accessible. Are we talking about right now, this meeting? The, no, no, no. I'm not talking about having our bios and pictures up on Instagram. Yeah. And I've asked Sydney to talk to her parents about it to see if that's see if it's advisable or not. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't put my kids' pictures out there in this world, but we're adults, so. There's also a branding perspective in that, you know, we as a community who are, who are on the council you know, are, are furthering arts in the community, but it does change out pretty frequently, so, you know, the individuals matter, but they also are 
less important, you know, because we're here to, to serve. So as a brand, it might be better not to have individual people's faces. I don't know. Mandy, Leah, do you have any? Um, I don't know. I feel like safety wise, it's hard because I feel like, I don't know. Like I, I definitely like already have my face on like social media things, mm -hmm. but I feel like that like last meeting sort of like changed sort of a lot of like dynamics and like if we want to like, because I always, I was like, I just didn't really think that anyone would really put that much energy into just like a government organization if they were like attacking people, but I guess people do that. So just find it so discouraging, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I, this is real gray hair. I don't dye it this color. <laughs> feel ancient. I think something that might be worth thinking about um, is just that, or sorry, Instagram is safer than Zoom to some extent. I mean, it's, it's very easy to remove comments on Instagram to report stuff like that. Whereas on Zoom, it, it's much more difficult to oh, get okay. that sort of. So we can govern what statements appear on our Instagram. That's what, what yeah. you do. Okay, well then I feel better about it. I just kind of wondered if we were making targets. So uh, this is for Instagram. This isn't for the town website about the, cult the cultural council? No. This would be, this is our Instagram account. And the thought was to have pictures of us in just a couple of sentences about each other. Yeah, and I mean, so I, I think my comment is just, um, I'm really happy that you reached out to, to parents, Gigi, and, and that, you know, especially folks who are minors on here do, um, you know, all, th all three of you should be, have parent consent to be, I think, participating in even, even something like that, because it is, linked up to the council. Um, but I also will say just for from my own perspective, it's a social, it's a social media post. So it's kind of, you know, it's it's here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. It doesn't um, doesn't, you know doesn't the goal I think is to have an active social media account where, you know, it's not like our face our our you know mugs are not gonna live forever as representing, you know, the breadth of the council. I mean, we want the artists and the art to be the content of that social mm -hmm. media site mm -hmm. and this was just kind of a a little a little a, a post you know just one post out of okay out of okay many. i just you know i i don't yeah. want to expose okay. anyone to something they don't understand i mean definitely on instagram i think it would probably if people were to like harass people they would want to do it through like direct messages or like dms which wouldn't be which, visible to the public and i don't know i feel like it would be weird to dm something that's like clearly run by like an organization and multiple people okay and even right. like i feel like i even i have a private account and i get like just like there's so many bots that will send just like weird creepy messages but you just you can just like delete them and filter through them Okay, well then try everybody get your pictures and a little, a couple of sentences about yourself to Leah and Sydney. Um, by Monday, you wanted them, right? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah, you can do that. Get out your camera, take a selfie. <laughs> okay. If you well, really don't want to do it, I could, I could just put like a name and blurb. I don't okay. know if you do, yeah. Okay. It is supposed to be like, an up-to-date picture, like not, not when I'm a toddler on my tricycle, which is so funny. <laughs> Whatever you can come up with, Rob. <laughs> but it's supposed to be relevant, so, right, yeah. okay. On my Facebook page, I have a reproduction of a 19th century lithograph called the New England Beauty. <laughs> Could use that. <laughs> well, my Facebook page, I've got me on the tricycle. It's very cute, but. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we'll see you all next week. We'll have a lot to do. And um, so, so you, we should read the rest. Yeah, read the rest. 
and um, we'll see what happens. So chainsaws, did we decide no? Hi, everyone. Pardon me? The chainsaws, cheeseburgers? Chainsaws, no. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thanks for Very coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.